Hello everyone and welcome to your Glass Note video report for week 47. I'm your host Checkmate and we're recording this on the 23rd of November 2021. So we've had a bit of a breakdown in price this week. We've seen it pull back from the all-time high. We hit about 69,000. And this week we traded down as low as around 55,000. So it's been a reasonable pullback. And what we're going to do this week is really assess what we're seeing on chain in response to this drawdown. We typically like to look at different cohorts, long-term, short-term holders. And what we're going to look at is a couple of things. We'll look at the profitability of the spending that's going on at the moment. We'll identify which cohorts look like they're actually engaging in most of the spending. And what we'll actually identify here is that the short-term holders are actually driving a lot of this price action. Long-term holders, for the most part, are actually sitting relatively tight. So there's two packets of information there. And then what we're also going to do is use that observation of our short-term holder behavior. And then we're going to distill out and say, okay, well, what could a potential spot look like or a, um, a support level that we're looking at as kind of the, the last of strongest defense, right? Where are we going to find this line where, where uh, short-term holders are going to step in and likely see that this is a, a value add or are we actually going to trend lower? So we're going to kind of assess all these different dynamics in play. So let's jump into the charts and get started. So as I mentioned, we've essentially pulled back from a high of around 66,000 to around 55 this week. So a non-trivial, fairly substantial, I think it was about $12,000 in total if you include the wicks um, in terms of total price action. So it's a fairly substantial pullback. However, what I will just highlight is that it is in the context of a larger upswing. And you can actually see we have some similarities just visually in terms of price action, what we saw back there in September. So what we're really gonna assess here is, do we think that there is a probability that this moves into more bearish territory? Or is it actually more likely to be a, a higher low and we continue to establish this macro uptrend? So we're just trying to look at the different factors that may influence that eventual outcome. So the first one that I like to look at, what we have here is our percent supply in profit. And I also have our, our URPD metric, which shows the, the current price of the entire Bitcoin UTXO set. What was the price when every coin last moved? So when we see these big drawdowns or even big rallies, when you see a large move, I like to look at things like our percent supply in profit because it tells us about what the change, how many people bought above this level and are currently underwater, how many people bought um, you know, at a lower level, what we saw back here in, uh, in the August rally is we saw a massive repricing of this uh, percent supply in profit. And that tells us that a large amount of coins, right, a large percentage of the supply was purchased down in this zone. It shows us that we, it confirms the support level that we've just observed. Now, much the same, some people have essentially bought this topping pattern, right? This will happen. Somebody will always step in and buy these topping patterns. And as we get a pullback at the moment, we're down here. I mean, from all time high, by definition, is at 100% supply and profit. So where we're currently at around 84% tells us that 16% or thereabouts of the total supply has a cost basis above our current price. So that's telling us we have 16% of the supply above us. And obviously, when people are underwater, they're more likely to become a seller, right? A fourth seller. They don't like the fact that their portfolio is in the red. They become the most likely candidates to then sell. So we can actually quantify this. If we look at our URPD metric, you can see that we're actually what I would call somewhat top heavy, right? So we do have a large amount of these coins, the coin supply that last moved at higher prices. Now, what I also want to highlight, and if you go back and look at some of our previous videos and, and newsletters, you'll see that we were talking about how much this zone, the 30,000, the 40,000, this zone filled out a lot during this May through to July period, even through August and September. We saw a huge amount of coins accumulated and bought during this particular phase. Now, these zones have actually thinned out quite a bit, and they've shown up up here. What we're seeing is coins that were purchased in this early phase, right, this, this um, 30,000, then up to 40,000, in particular through this zone, a large amount of those coins have been resold and re essentially like a swing trade. As the market has rallied, those traders have taken those coins and redeposited them to somebody else, right? They've changed hands at a higher price point. So what we've essentially seen is a swing trade, and that's our first piece of evidence that we likely have short-term holders because all of this is going to occur within about five months short-term holders are likely driving a lot of this price action what we've essentially seen is a very macro swing trade people have purchased down here at twenty-nine thousand, and then liquidated up here in the sixty thousands for somewhere around a, a 2x right so it kind of makes sense that we're going to get some kind of overhead resistance here on an easy double so now what we need to assess is, okay, what's the probability that this continues to trend into some kind of downtrend? Are we in for more bearish price action? 
Now, I generally like to look at two different things here. I'm, I'm looking at the long-term holders who are kind of the, the high conviction, well-experienced investors. They understand how this market works. And then you've got the shorter-term holders who are more likely to sell in the face of volatility. This is all statistically based. The reason we have the five-month cutoff, 155 days for short and long-term is because statistically speaking, that is when a coin is more likely to stay dormant, when it's older than that, and younger is the other way around. So generally speaking, long-term holders have already established that five months, that five-month period, pretty much encapsulates everything from May through to our current period, right? June, July, that whole zone. So that's the short-term holder zone. Everything before that are long-term holders. And by and large, with obviously the exception of the very, very top um, back there in April, which by the way, there's not that many coins that remain from that particular zone. Um, those are the long-term holders. So by and large, long-term holders are going to be in profit. Short-term holders are more likely to be in a loss at this point in time. So what we have here is our realized profit and our realized loss. Now, this is actually quite a constructive sign. What I like to see on a pullback, particularly a significant pullback, we saw this in September as well, where you get this declining level. So we see this rising realized profit during the rally, people selling into bull market strength. Let's actually zoom out on a one-year basis here rising realized profits into a strong rally. More people taking profits as we rally. As we get a pullback, look at here in September, as we pulled back from the high in September, fewer profits are being realized. That tells us something about the conviction of the market. The smart money, people who are in profit, long-term holders are spending less. They're more likely, where they're spending less, to be stepping in and buying the dip. At the very least, they're putting less supply into the market. It's generally a good sign. Now, look what we have at the moment. We have realized profits peaking at around both the all-time highs, right? We pulled up to the first all-time high, and then our second one at 69,000, we had realized profits spike in both cases, and look how much it's pulled back. This is actually showing that people with profitable coins have slowed their spending. It's generally a, a relatively constructive sign. Now, on the other hand, people who bought the top, and generally this is the way that markets work, people who buy the top have to capitulate and flush out and, and essentially remove all remaining sellers from the market before we can push higher. And note how at the same time as our realized profits are declining, so conviction is returning to those with profitable coins, they're sitting tight, they're not selling at 55, we're seeing rally higher in people capitulating and selling who bought the top and are essentially selling out at the lows. The, generally, we tend to see that sometimes it can take a little bit longer, right? We saw obviously through the, uh, the May through to June, July period, this extended for some time, but that would be a more bearish trend. What we're seeing is a fairly rapid, and I like to see these rapid changes because it's showing a very quick shift in sentiment. So we're seeing top buyers capitulate. Long-term holders are generally spending less profits, right? They're sitting more tight than, the, than otherwise. And that's how we're, again, that's another piece of evidence that we've got these short-term holders buying the top and essentially flushing out. Now, I also want to jump across and look at two different metrics just to really paint this picture. Um, we're going to look into the short-term holders in a second, but this is how I really want to isolate why I'm looking at them in particular. Now, what we have here is the HODL waves, and I've filtered for only coins that are younger than three months. The, the short-term holder is you know, roughly around five months, but um, generally we can see, I mean, a coin when it's spent, it has to go back to one day and migrate through that you know, one, two, three month period. But generally, this will give us a reasonable picture of what's going on. Now, the HODL waves are as a percentage, right, a proportion of the total BTC supply. What I want to, we've got all of Bitcoin's history price here. Note how our current HODL waves, younger than one, three months, are pretty much at all time lows, right? There's only a handful of instances, generally, by the way, at the end of bear markets and at the very end of bear and the very, very beginning of bulls that we see this many, this few young coins. And by the way, because this is a percentage of supply, um, we're actually, because all the coins that are mined over time, this is actually showing that there's more t absolute value. The total number of coins that are very, very young, younger than three months, is actually pretty much at all time lows. So how can we have all of these coins being spent when, you know, where are they coming from? If they're not becoming, you know, if they're not one year coins being spent to become old, where are they all coming from? And this is adding that final piece of evidence to the fact that most of the coins that are moving at the moment were essentially accumulated within the last couple of months. It's the same liquid supply essentially being in a swing trade. People bought down there at 29,000. They then sold up there at 60. And then they've, you know, price pulled back in September to 40. They bought again, then they sold again. We're seeing swing trades playing out. It's the same liquid supply moving around. And to just really drive this home, this is our realized cap hollow wave. So whereas the hollow waves is looking at proportion of total coin supply, BTC denominated, 
The realized cap hollow waves is USD denominated, and it's looking at what is the proportion of the realized cap. Now, note how we're actually seeing an uptrend here. It's more significant. What that's showing is that coins that were bought cheaper are being repriced higher. The young coins, those very same coins, whilst they may be the same coin volume in BTC terms, the same proportion of circulating, in terms of the dollar value when they last moved, it's actually uprising. And again, this is showing that as an overall concept, we're seeing short-term holders swing trading at the moment. They're withdrawing their coins from an exchange, watching the market rally, and then they're selling. And then in many instances, it actually looks like they're buying again. We're seeing swing trading playing out in the on-chain data. So that's why we're now going to focus on our short-term holders to kind of close out this, uh, this particular session and really look at what their behavior is doing and what we can use from that information to try and identify opportunities. So now what we're going to look at is two things. We're looking at our short-term holder SOPA. So this is the um, um, spent output profit ratio, how profitable are the coins being spent, but filtered only for our short-term holders. And we also have an MVRV, which is essentially mapping where is the current short-term holder profitability of all the coins they hold relative to their cost basis. And what we really look for, short-term holder SOPA is quite reactive. We see these uptrends, and note that this is actually a fairly, like this is fairly soft. We're not seeing these massive uptrends like we saw during January uh, 2020, uh, sorry, uh, December 2020, January 2021. This is large-scale short-term holder profit taking. People are in a lot of profit, they're selling a lot of coins, and we saw even elevated levels all through this topping pattern, but note how it started to soften off. As we move through the May, June, July period, this is more like a bear market characteristic. There's a lot of things that point at this that's actually having a bear market characteristic. Short-term holders essentially were at a loss for most of that period. And note how every time it pulled back to a value of one, which is where they're, they're basically at their break-even point, they were essentially selling out, getting their money back for want of a better term. And that generally forms these little local tops, right? Whenever short-term holders get into any kind of profit or their break-even, they're essentially saying, please just give me back my money. So this is the psychology playing out. Now, what we also have is that as we broke into this upswing that we've had over the last couple of months, note how one acts as support. That's showing that essentially when they get back to their break even, their cost basis price, they stop selling, right? That's essentially people stepping in and buying the dip. And generally, when SOPA resets back down to one or gets a little bit below, this is what I call an undercut. We get this undercut of one, which basically means it trades a little bit lower than that. That's showing that realized loss. It's essentially picturing, note how our short term hold of SOPA has broken below one. And we've seen an uptick in realized losses, but a downtick in realized profits. This is really telling us quite a bit about the overall sentiment of the market. And essentially, this is what dips generally look like. Now, of course, there's always a risk that we could get this top heavy coin supply continue to push us lower. This risk does exist. However, if we do believe that we're in some kind of a bull market, then generally when we get these resets and these capitulation events, it's typically a reasonably good signal that the dip is at the very least getting ready for the next leg of a bounce higher. So we, we try to look at these from all different perspectives and just understand exactly what's going on um, across these different cohorts of investors. So we're going to touch on the MVRV in a little bit more detail shortly, actually. We'll look at this alongside the on-chain cost basis. But just to kind of close out this section before we jump to our final chart, note that the spent volume age band. So this is looking at the portion of coin supplies in terms of the total volume that's moving. And note how we have a downtrend in these purple bands. It's again, it's backing up that concept that older coins, which are more likely to be in profit, are spending less volume as this correction plays on. It's again, it's really pointing to this fairly, um, fairly important uh, observation that we have very little increase in short-term supply. Now, short-term supply can only increase when old coins are being spent. It aligns with a downtrend in our old coins being spent. A lot of these things are just really highlighting that most of the volume at the moment seem to be short-term holders. And that's why we're focusing on them as kind of our, our cohort of interest at the moment, because it looks like they're doing a lot of swing trading. So the last metric that I want to close on is what I'm calling the short-term holder cost basis. It's a derivative of our MVRV ratio. So the realized price is essentially all of the coins at the price when they last moved on chain. Now, what we've done is filtered that for just the short-term holder cohort. Now, what I want you to, uh, and the MVRV is then a ratio between the current price and the realized cap. And you can see the short-term holder realized cap is here in pink. And you can actually see that it's quite reactive. It follows price quite well. And we'll look at this in more detail. 
but the MVRV ratio then takes a ratio between them. So the way to think about this, if the pink line is their cost basis, the price when they last move their coins, well, the further the price is away to the upside or the downside, the more profit or loss that those short-term holders are in. And the more extreme, the further away you get from that mean, the more likely someone is to sell and take profits or capitulate and put in a bottom. So when we see the MVRV, note how particularly during, we look at, let's look at the 2017 or 16, 17 bull market as our first case study. What I want you to note is know how the MVRV finds support regularly on a value of one. That's what this blue line is showing. And every time it pulls back to one, the price is essentially bouncing on the cost basis. And look how well it catches all of these dips. The short-term holder cost basis is essentially providing support because psychologically, short-term holders at that point in time are at their cost basis. They believe that that was a, a, a good position to actually be entering in the first place. Um, and generally that signifies, it's kind of this psychological level that people are gonna step in and buy the dip. And you can see that through 2017 and 16, it was actually a very, very high conviction signal. It worked quite well. So in our current market structure, Let's zoom in on the last five years just to get a bit of a picture of what's going on. Now, what you can see is that the short-term holder, this is kind of the zoomed in, we noted that it found support all the way through the bull. Note how the exact same psychology, when people are underwater in a bear market, they just want to get their money back. And note how the short-term holder cost basis forms resistance all the way down, right? Until we break above it. We found support here in 2019 was a funny year, but we found support, we broke below, we found resistance, we broke above, support, support, broke below. It really acted, but you can see that it comes into play quite often. It's regularly tested and it's really testing the conviction of these short-term holders. Are they really selling into a bear market or are they stepping in and actually buying the dip? What's their overall sentiment? Now, note that we actually had a, I mean, September was caught beautifully on the short-term hold. You can see where it actually kind of bounced off that uh, particular level. And as we look at our current market cycle, this is where things get quite interesting. Note that we're hovering just slightly above it. The current level of the short-term hold at cost basis is 53,000. So if we're thinking that this is in fact a bull market, if we do suspect that some of these top heavy coins need to capitulate and realize losses, 53,000 is probably a high conviction level where we're likely to, at the very least, get some kind of a test, some kind of support, right? That's at least a starting point of just something to have in your mind looking forward when it comes to trying to manage risk. So thanks for tuning in. Um, hopefully this was useful in how we identified short-term holders and looked at different cohorts. Um, do uh, give us some comments and feedback in the, uh, in the comment section below. Um, like and share the video on your social platforms. It's, it really does help us get uh, you know more people viewing and finding Edge using these videos. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Cheers.